pandemonium Use my fangs to murder you Yo soy la diosa, los demonios no me controlan Soy culebra, una seca, soy la reina Adicta a la sangre, es mi condena Una heroína como Lola, la trailera Sangre maya en mis venas What's up? 7 October's here Welcome to Nightmare on Sedgwick Avenue It's been a minute that I've done one of these I wanted to review a dope, uh, unique and brilliant horror film I just watched uh, called Master, written and directed by Mariama Diallo. Hopefully I didn't butcher her name. Um, this just dropped on Amazon Prime about two days ago. So today's March 20th, 2022. Um, and we'll get right into it. I kind of want to watch the trailer first and then we'll get into the premise, what I thought about the film. There will be some spoilers. So if you haven't seen uh, the film, I'll probably encourage you to watch it first and then come back and watch this review. Uh, but yeah, let's get right into it. Uh, let me pull up the trailer here. Last name, first name? Warren. Jasmine. Guys, she got the room. Legends. Ancaster College is crowded with them. When you go to a school that's nearly as old as the country, you can expect to hear a few. It can be really hard for students of color. Just know I'm here. It's amazing, Gil. First black master. Very exciting. <laughs> it is. She had a great you score and the, just the way yeah. they filmed it too, like that scene right there. The whole crazy. Cursed. Okay, you're, you're gonna have to try a lot harder than that to scare me. <laughs> Seriously, it's, it's real. I understand. I went through it. Can I just... This school is unwilling to see itself for what it truly is. I've been having nightmares. You look like you've seen a ghost. That dark, the way they filmed it, and like that kind of dark vibe. Why is this administration it's, it's spending more it energy sure. undermining my tenure than on ferreting out who's been terrorizing the student body? I can't get away from it, Jasmine. It'll follow you. It's everywhere. <laughs> All right, so that was a trailer. Um, as you saw, the two main characters in this film is played by Regina Hall, who plays Gail, the housemaster, or aka Master, um, hence the title of the film. And as we all know, that has that word has a dark past, dark history, um, going back to like slavery. So Regina Hall actually has a really uh, dope line in the film, and I'll kind of get into it towards the end um, that references that, and it goes with the, the whole um, pretty much theme of the film which I really loved. And Regina Hall, like as Gail, had some of the best lines at the end to powerful speech. But we follow her. Um, it's the first black woman to hold that position as housemaster. Um, so we kind of see her navigating through that, how that's been being around other teachers who, um, for the most part, are all white. Uh, we see, I think, like an Asian uh, professor and stuff like that. But most of all, she's made the mainly the main person of color in uh, her surroundings and then also her friend who and we saw in the trailers played by amber gray she plays Liv, um who also happens to be black um and she's trying to get tenure and she's having difficulties trying to get that as well um and then that's where jasmine comes in jasmine is kind of the main pretty much the protagonist uh, of the film played by um zoe renee Pretty much we're following her journey as a freshman, as a black young freshman in college, her first time, you know, being away from home, probably. Um, we get to know a little bit about her throughout the film, like she was valedictorian at her school. So she, you already know, she's intelligent, uh, but she's having trouble fitting, fitting in. And 
right off the bat, um, as you saw in the trailer, you already see some supernatural undertones um, that there was a witch or a ghost, should I say, of Margaret um, Millette. And she was accused of witchcraft and hanged um, nearby. So supposedly she haunts the grounds of uh, Ancaster College, which is the fictional college that the movie takes place in. And I guess the room where Jasmine is staying at, which is room 302, is um, the same room where in 1965 Louisa Weeks, a black graduate um, who committed suicide by hanging. So they say that that room's haunted and whoever stays in that room uh, pretty much suffers the same fate. And at 3.33 a.m., pretty much the the ghost comes and takes you with them to hell, right? So that's where it comes to the whole supernatural. So at first, um, Jasmine doesn't really believe any of that. Um, but you already see kind of like slowly she's kind of getting isolated. So she has a roommate, which um, the roommate's white. She has a bunch of white friends as well. Um, there's this really um, like scene that I even felt really awkward because I think I've been in those situations too. So I know that feeling how, how it feels or so the way that Mariama directed this scene, I thought was really um really brilliant because I can literally see the awkwardness and just like the not even fitting in there like I can feel it coming off the screen like that scene so the scene is actually uh in the trailer a little clip uh where the guy goes up to Jasmine and telling him that it that it's uh this the campus is haunted and that it's real so she goes into the dorm room it's probably like maybe the second or third night I think that she's there um and her roommate's there with a bunch of friends and Jasmine is the only black girl in the room when she comes in and everybody's like smoking weed, whatever. And she just goes in. The roommate doesn't really introduce her as a roommate. She just kind of comes in. She says, hey, what's up, everybody? And then everybody starts saying, like, oh, well, who's that? Like, what's your name? And then they start saying these, and like, it's pretty much like racist comments um, or uh, just kind of saying, like, oh, is, is it Nicki Minaj? Like, naming all these black artists. And then she doesn't really know what to say Jasmine's character she's just like kind of like laughing it off a little bit but you can tell she's um she doesn't feel comfortable there and she doesn't want to say anything at the same time because she's outnumbered um so I thought that scene um was really well done uh like I said I can feel it off the screen because I've been in those rooms where you kind of feel like you're the only either person of color or you just feel like you don't fit in and um you're trying to make the most of that situation um, you kind of want to run away, but you kind of got to stay. Um, so that that scene uh, was really great. And then I really like the way Mariama, like, or the director Gallo, um, Diallo, uh, pretty much did the film where it was, you can see part of Jasmine doing something and then it would go to the next scene and it was Gail. And it was kind of like they were simultaneously um, connected and they were doing certain things that kind of connected to the others which was pretty dope like the way um that was filmed so in some scenes we'll see jasmine going through something and then the next scene would be gail and it's kind of like uh parallel to each other uh what i should say and then at the uh, towards the middle of the of the film they kind of you know uh cross paths so gail is also like i said she's kind of navigating um being the first black woman to hold this position having a lot of pressure on her um, and then also being part of the council that, uh, pretty much determines if her friend Liv gets tenure. Um, and she feels like it's, it's like they're making a bigger deal for her for some reason, because she's a woman of color. At least that's what I interpreted from the film. Um, and also Gail is kind of like put in the middle because, Jasmine ends up going to her um, as the housemaster and saying that she's going to file a complaint against Liv, um, who is her, her, who is Jam Jasmine's professor, uh, because there was some sort of assignment that Jasmine did. She thought she did a good job on it, but Liv, the professor, gave her like an F uh, because she didn't think that she understood the assignment. Um, and it seems like Liv is being tougher on Jasmine. I don't know why, if it's because um, she, she sees more potential in her. And sometimes I think, um, when it's like another person of color with another person of color, sometimes you want a, the best for them and you probably don't act in the right way. Like, and you're tougher on that, that student. Cause you can see that they can do even better than what they see in themselves. I don't know if that's where Liv was coming from, like a night, a, a good place, but for Jasmine, it kind of felt like she was being, um, 
pretty much um, picked on and targeted by the teacher, and that's why she didn't get the grade that she thought she deserved. So she files a complaint, and that goes to the people that are trying to, um, the council that's trying to figure out if Liv is going to get tenure, uh, which, again, Gail's kind of right in the middle because she was there when Jasmine told her that she was going to file the complaint. And then at the same time, Gail is friends with Liv. So right there, that dynamic uh, is kind of crazy. Um, and like I said, there's um, there's really like uh, scenes that through the screen to me, I was like, wow, like the way it was filmed, like I felt like I was like really there. Um, there's a scene too with um, Regina Hall's character, Gail. Um, she goes to um, this party that the professors or staff, faculty is having and right when this teacher opens the door, she's like, oh, I'm so glad you're here so you can bring some flavor to the party. And like these little um, little comments that you hear throughout as a person of color, me, myself, being Mexican, I've been in those places where people say certain things that are not like culturally sensitive or they don't even realize or are aware that some of it can be pretty much it's like racist commentary type of things, at least. That's how I take it. And from this film, um, there was scenes like that throughout the film where Gail is put in these positions where they say certain comments, but she doesn't really want to say anything um, because sometimes you're seen as like the angry, you know, brown person or the angry, angry black person. Uh, if you say something, if you try to defend yourself um, and there's there is a scene at the end uh, that kind of culminates to, to that. Uh, where Regina Hall ends up actually um, really a spoiler from the from the film pretty much um, the, we find out that Liv is it's kind of weird at the end of the movie it's not really clear if, if she was or she wasn't but pretty much um, this Amish lady calls Regina and says like hey you know my daughter so she meets her at a diner it turns out that she's the mother of Liv the real mother and um the lady's white. And so she pretty much tells um, Gail that Liv is is white, that she's not black. And Gail is like, wait, what the fuck? Like uh, all this time she's been saying she's black and all, and she's been using that as for, for her to get tenure, using her, um, her color to try to get tenure. And so she's like, what the fuck? And I was kind of blown away. I was like, wait, what? So then um, she goes to this party where they're celebrating because Liv ended up getting uh, tenure. And she tries to talk, pull her aside and say, hey, like, I want to talk to you. Like, she wants to clear stuff up, like, to see, like, is this real or, or what's going on? And so she kind of ignores her. Um, and she pretty much, Regina's character ends up yelling at everybody and saying, you know what? Like, everybody, like, you know what? We need to, like, shut up. I just found out that she is not who she says she is. And it pretty much tells everybody that she has, she was lying about her race. But... Liv ends up saying that that's not true, that her mom uh, pretty much uh, treated her like shit because she was half black because her uh, father was black. So we interpret it as Liv being half half white, half black, um, but they don't really go after that because pretty much the film ends up ending a few minutes after that. So I thought that was kind of another thing where it was like, was Liv using... Um, that the part of her that she was mixed to be able to get tenure but at the same time we do see her interact with jasmine after the complaint she cares for her she's not taking it personal um you can tell she also cares about everything that's going on because back to jasmine jasmine's dealing with her roommates um just this awkwardness uh the roommate um is sort of dating some guy and the guy at they go to this house party and the guy kisses um Jasmine and the roommate sees it so right there right off the bat there's already drama there the roommate kind of hates her because she tried to like take her guy which she's not really dating either and the guy is kind of the one that kissed Jasmine so there's drama there um at school as well like the whole thing with the teacher she's not pretty much failing her classes um she's not able to sleep she starts having these nightmares um start seeing things um at one point um, she hears something and she wakes up from a nightmare and then, um, she opens the door and there's actually like a noose hanging on the door, uh, which actually Gail ends up, uh, finding because she knocks at the door and when she, when Jasmine opens it for her is when they see the noose right there on the uh, door handle. So all these, 
um, things that Jasmine is going through. Um, she's slowly, like I said, getting isolated. They have like, I think Thanksgiving break, if I remember right. And, um, she ends up staying there and everybody leaves campus. Her roommate actually ends up leaving the room. And, uh, from what I interpreted, she actually ends up leaving the college. Um, cause there's other things that happen throughout the film that I want to, I don't want to give away, but pretty much, um, Jasmine's not sleeping. She starts researching a little bit more about the whole, uh, witch and, um, the ghost of Louisa Weeks. And, um, it's just taking her down a dark path. You can tell she's slowly kind of giving up. Um, she tells, um, Gail who she kind of confides in. Um, you can just tell she's just, she's not fitting in and, and feels like out of place. Uh, there's specific little scenes in the film. I don't want to get in too much into detail with them, uh, but they were really dope. Actually, one of them was in the trailer. Uh, where she goes to the library and she gets some books and she puts them in her backpack. She checks them out like she normally would. She's, she walks out and then, um, the, uh, detector, the, the, the motion, not motion detectors, like the detectors to check to make sure that you're not like stealing anything, like, um, starts ringing. And so the librarian tells her to come back. She tells her, Hey, I have to check, you know, the books. So she checks the books and everything's fine. And then she kind of stares at Jasmine and she's like, do you mind if I just like look inside your, your bag? But we kind of know like if it would have been somebody that wouldn't have been black, they probably would, she probably wouldn't have asked. But, and then she, the librarian ends up apologizing and it's like an awkward moment, but just things like that throughout the film, um, I thought were like really brilliant by, um, Diallo, the director. Um, it just brought the whole theme to me, the whole theme of like the, the ghost of the, of Margaret Millett to me was like a personification of racism. Cause at the end, like I said, uh, Gail has a really uh, great speech, uh, and Jasmine suffers a tragic fate. Um, she pretty much ends up for, like, again, spoilers here. She ends up committing suicide. Um, so pretty much right before she commits suicide it's ma it makes it seem like she has um it was like the witch right like they, they use the supernatural um aspects of the film to kind of portray racism at least that's how i understood it like the ghost of margaret Millette is the personification of racism in, here in america uh which i thought was really deep um the way that she connected, at least that's what I took from it. Maybe I'm looking at it at a deeper level, but that's what I got from the film. Um, so pretty much Jasmine ends up going to the room. Um, she feels like some sort of ghost or entities following her. She climbs out the window and she ends up falling and she like breaks, I think just her arm or something. So she ends up at the hospital and Gail, um, speaks with her she goes visits her and it's in the trailer as well where she says that she's she's been through it herself to not give up to just keep going like it is it is tough sometimes being like the only black um person whether it's at college or wherever it may be but to just you know keep going through it like um not going through but like keep pushing through pretty much that it'll, it'll get better right um so just kind of try to motivate her to not give up um and Jasmine ends up leaving the hospital, um, just running away and trying to confront her fear. At least that's what I got from it. Like she actually goes to the room, but, uh, she ends up dying. Right. And they show that she like hung herself in the room because Gail actually finds, um, her body. And it's a really like tragic scene, really like heartfelt moment right there. Um, cause Gail just feels guilt that she couldn't save her. Right. Um, yeah, like that, that, that scene right there was, uh, um, it was pretty emotional. Um, so Gail then gives a speech and I don't want to give it all away, but it was a great film. Like I said, what I took from it is that the ghost of Margaret Millette was a personification of racism that you can't really escape it, that it's there, it's, it haunts us, it still haunts us today, it still exists, even though you cannot see it, it exists, uh, that's one thing I talk about a lot with my friends, I actually just had a conversation not that long ago with my friend about the fact that some people don't believe in racism because it does, might not happen to them, but it doesn't mean that it does not exist, just because you haven't personally experienced it doesn't mean it does not exist, so to me, that's what 
Margaret Millet's ghost was is a personification of racism and kudos to uh, Mariama Diallo uh, for creating this dope, unique film. I really loved it. The cast too, Regina Hall, Zoe Renee, Amber Gray, everybody else that I missed. Um, the score, the cinematography, the way it was filmed, everything I loved about it. Um, the darkness of like the way it was filmed. Um, just like I said, I, I really love this film. I can't talk, um, say better things about it. Uh, I just recommend it. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. Um, and hopefully you probably watch the film and then you're watching this movie review now, so I didn't ruin it for you. But yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, you can, uh, see actually my channel. I have other movie reviews I've done, TV show reviews. I also have my, uh, blog series, The Book of Seven, where I show you about my life. So if you enjoyed this, uh, video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, comment, like, all that helps me out. And thank you guys for tuning in, uh, to Nightmare on Sedgwick Avenue. Peace.